Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only Trent set of DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called Can You Gobble That Dick? The ingredients are gin, lime juice, club soda, and you're going to want to muddle three limes. So you're going to get a cup, put some ice in it, pour two shots of gin, a couple squirts of lime juice, splash of club soda, and then just squeeze. It says three limes, but I like it with like five limes. Just squeeze them all in there, drop the lime pills in, stir it around, and enjoy it. Can you gobble that dick? Can you gobble that dick, Kiki? Um, if I feel like it, <laughs> it depends on if they deserve. I've got a story about gobbling and swallowing and being on the receiving end. I don't know if I'm going to tell it today or if I want to wait a week. We'll see. Anyway, oh. welcome back to Cocktail Show Discussions, you guys. Hey My y'all. allergies are killing me, so please do not leave us a four or three star review if you hear me sniffling. I'm gonna try or swallowing. Scoop. <laughs> I'm going to try and scoot back from the mic, but um, yeah, so just keep me on the prayer list for that. Um, what's been up? Um, you know, just getting ready for, I'm trying to figure out when I'm going to leave for Thanksgiving. I still haven't bought my ticket yet. And I don't know why I waited so long. I'm going to Oklahoma. Oh yeah. So my sister's very pregnant. So she won't be, normally we would be in either Pittsburgh or Dallas, but we're all just going to go to Oklahoma, which Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about her. And my brother-in-law just moved into a new house. So it'll be cute. I was like, can I bring my dog? I'm always quick to be like, is it okay to bring my dog? Because I know how pregnant people start getting picky. And, you know, she What'd needs she to be say? with us. She was like, absolutely bring oh. bring her. I was like, okay, she. I can't just be leaving my baby girl out. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, what's up with you? Um, I'm so ready for Thanksgiving. This is my favorite holiday. It's like my Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I love to cook and stuff. So I'm really excited about it. I've been practicing different dessert recipes. Um, by the way, if you guys are looking for recipes, I do have some great recipes in Classy Base. The digital version is available now. The class, the hard copies finally will be here any day and you guys will get them. But if you get the hard copy, you get a free digital copy with it um, until the book starts shipping out. That was just, you know, thank Thanks for your patience kind of thing. Uh, but there are some great recipes in there. So I've been working on that. And so do you new- have Thanksgiving dishes in there? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, like some traditional stuff like my candy yams are in there. My collard greens are in there. Um, There's some other side dishes that are less traditional, but Mm -hmm. I like to mix like traditional things for Thanksgiving with non-traditional things to kind of get people to try something new and also to get the kids to try something different. Mm -hmm. Um, So for Veterans Day, I'm going to use Kiki's uh, classy base cookbook to cook for a little uh, military bay I just met. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. Do you know? You're gonna make a pasta yet? dish. I'm gonna okay. do one of the pasta dishes because okay. he said he really likes pasta. Uh-huh. So I was like, okay, all right. So I'll send you pictures and tell you how it turns out. Yes, do that. Um, other than that, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything I want to share right now. Maybe not. I'm still very sore from our live workout yesterday. Um, oh my gosh! You guys, every time I Patreon, sit on the toilet. Um, we're going to start doing these uh, workouts. Um, uh, naturally, this was not my idea, but uh, <laughs> and I am still in pain. And I'm like, why did I listen to Medina? Why did I agree <laughs> to do this? Why was this a good idea? I'm glad that I got up and I was moving, but my body is aching today. Y'all, my body feels the same way as Kiki's, but it felt great to start the day off like that. Um, if you guys want to join the Total 21 program with Leticia, make sure you go to total21.com and check it out. She has a free ab workout right now. It's free for a limited for a limited amount of time, but go. It's worth it. I feel like I already lost the pounds. I know I didn't, but I feel like I did. <laughs> I was going to say, girl, what? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, last week we went on Fox Soul. 
So if you didn't get to catch fun. it, it was late if you were on the East Coast. If you didn't catch it, you can go to their website, foxsoul.tv. They have replays on there and you can catch it. It was um, a very interesting experience. I enjoyed myself. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was so much fun. Uh, it looked like the feedback that I saw online, most people enjoyed us. Um, somebody who was on the show didn't, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, this week... Um, you're hearing this after it's been out, but we're on the Oprah Rose show this week. So if you've never checked out that podcast, go check them out. They have a new episode that just released on Wednesday featuring us. So go listen to them. You will not be disappointed. It was a great group of people. Mm -hmm. We played a fun little game. <laughs> it, it, I had a good time on that one, too. Yeah, I felt like I really knew them. That was that was mm -hmm. dope. Um, yes. Kiki, the people want to know, did you go on your date? No, I did not go on my date. And let me tell y'all why. Besides all of the reasons I gave last week. That nigga didn't hit me up. He didn't? <laughs> I did not hear from him again. Like he said that we were gonna make he was gonna make this plan and give me these options. Mm -hmm. Um, I never got said options. I never got anything, and I was just like, oh well, fuck it. But I'm gonna tell you about the power of manifestation. Said options. <laughs> he said he was gonna send me options to pick from like places to go eat. Which mm -hmm. I was, that was perfectly fine with me. I'm not super picky, but I just don't want to go anywhere basic. I can try something new, but don't send me somewhere basic. I would have sent him back. Obviously. Like Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. So, um, and I don't like places with overwhelmingly large menus. Like that's what Cheesecake Factory has. It gives me anxiety to think about it. It's it, like a book. It's like a little mini chapter book. It's as big as my cookbook is. That's what my cookbook <laughs> is like. It's it's It has the wire rings on it. It has that hard cover on the outside with the pages you can flip through with the laminated stuff. It's like and bitch, that. I'm already a Libra. I'm indecisive as fuck. You be like, okay, page 56. And then page I'm trying 14. to decide. That's why I order so many things. I love going out to eat with people so we can order like 10 items items everybody share so we can get a taste of everything but anyway yeah. i didn't go on my date but um when we were talking about the jamaican man from somebody's um either there i think it was an advice letter and she was talking about how he don't he doesn't eat pussy and i was like well they i've don't. only date and that's not true i've only dated one jamaican man y'all he didn't hit me up and i think i talked about him it's funny because the girl wrote the email in the bonus episode, I said something about him. And next thing I know, he's calling me planning a date. So look at that, that manifestation. I don't know if that was God or the devil <laughs> to be determined. I'll have to update y'all later. Um, but yeah, I didn't go on my date. So we'll see. But I decided I do want to start going on dates. I don't know how I'm going to talk myself into it. I guess I'll start next week. Um, Cause I'm leaving this weekend, but I do want to go on some Where dates. Are you I going? try it. I'm going to Texas. It's my niece's birthday. She is turning oh. 11. My first niece. I'm so excited. I have bought 11? 11. I have bought us all matching outfits. I have three nieces, you guys. They are 11, 7, and uh, one and some change, almost two. I, or hmm. is she two? I don't know. The new girl. So... <laughs> Phoenix is the new girl. I got us all matching outfits and I can't wait to take pictures with them and spend some time with them. She's finally warming up to me, but the oldest one, like that's my girl. So that's gonna be we're going so to celebrate. Cute. I'm excited. We're just both. I cannot wait and never mind. Yep. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> <laughs> so we do have. You know, when you start talking too much, you're like, Ooh. Mm -hmm. I gotta be careful. I'm drinking water today. So we were talking about family, and um, y'all know what happened with my family last year and the year before around Thanksgiving. <laughs> you made somebody mad, huh? Last year, I was the one that was mad. My feelings were hurt because of how some of my relatives were acting during Thanksgiving, and I was mm. crying. I didn't even get to get dressed up. My eyes were puffy. I almost didn't make it to dinner, even though I had been slaving in the kitchen. The year before, I made someone else mad who wasn't even fucking there. Um, but I had spent Thanksgiving for the first time with my dad's side of the family mm -hmm. and just went and did their traditions um, in Baton Rouge. And um, I was unimpressed with the food. <laughs> It wasn't, I mean, everybody else liked it, but it was like, you know, the holidays, and we'll talk about it more later. The holidays, you have your traditions and there's you certain do. food that you look forward to and certain things. And it wasn't there. I've not, I don't go to Thanksgiving that doesn't have collard greens or candy yams. 
I don't play about macaroni and cheese or potato salad or the collard greens. I'm not playing. Yeah, and the yams. I'm sorry. We need them all. Even if we, we need switch all the traditional up. stuff, then you add extra. Yeah. But you don't just be like, this year, guys, we're not doing mac and cheese. We always have to tell my brother and my dad that. If y'all want vegan mac and cheese. Make a small one. Make, we'll make a small one, but we're still having the regular booty clogging mac and cheese. Exactly. Like my grandfather has diabetes and it's a few other people, depending on who comes, they need to watch their sodium intake. They need to watch their sugar. I will make special sweet potato pies just for them that don't have sugar. I will mm -hmm. make special Do they greens. enjoy that though? Are yeah. they be like, man. No, okay. they enjoy it. And they, they've been eating it for years. Like I don't just skip the sugar. I put other ingredients in there to sweeten it. Something that mm -hmm. they can have. Um, maybe I should put that in the next book. But anyway, <laughs> um, I give the like we put stuff aside if you let us know you have dietary restrictions, but we still mm -hmm. gonna have the regular stuff that's gonna have everybody sleep. That's just that's just what Knocked it is. Knocked out. You thought you were going out to go see that holiday movie. We're sleep. No, if it's not on Netflix, baby, it's not happening. Anyway, we'll be going to the movies after Thanksgiving, but I guess oh. this year we won't be. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with a little Netflix and chill with the fam at home. Oh, before we um, play our game, I wanted to ask if we have any listeners that know how to transcribe stories into script form. If we do, will y'all send us an email to cocktails.atl at gmail.com? I need help with something. Okay. Want to play a game? All right. Yeah, we can play this game. So this is a new game. Mm -hmm. It came to me... In my sleep, because I have been <laughs> going on so many dates and, you know, just kind of recapping them on Instagram, getting ready on Instagram, listening to people's ideas, like asking people, what should we do? What do y'all be doing on your dates? And mm -hmm. so I came up with a game called Rate That Date. So y'all are going to hear a couple of different date options and Kiki and I will just kind of rate them. Okay. So I'll read the first one, Kiki. Okay. It says, Bay sends you a text that says, babe, meet me at this address when you get off. He has set up an 80 minute couple massage at Massage Envy for the two of you. What would you rate that date, Kiki? I like that. Um, but I don't hear no food. So I'm gonna give it... <laughs> I don't, I mean, are we going to, is there some cheese in there? Somebody going to feed me grapes? I'm going to give it a four. I like that. That's fine. Especially if it's like the day after one of my really stressful days. My stressful days are usually like the busier one. So if the next day we can go have this couple's massage, that's, I like that. Mm -hmm. What would you give yeah. it? I would, I think I would give it a five. I really like that. I like when people just take the initiative to encourage um, self care. Mm. And to me, that's like a form of self-care and you want to be a part of it with me. I'm giving it a five. Okay. I know it would probably be annoying though when he sent the address, but where is it? Where are we going? Where are we going? What is it? What is it? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I would I would definitely, and it's the 80 minute. It ain't just the, the normal 50 minutes. Okay. You get your extra 30. Um, mm -hmm. I would probably fall asleep, um, but that's a, that's a good massage because- yeah. Otherwise, it probably hurts. Massages, it's like hit or miss for me. Sometimes they hurt and sometimes they feel good. I can't handle anything too strong. Okay, mm -hmm. next one is um, apple picking. I'm giving that a five as I well. knew you and were because your face lit up. <laughs> I really want to go apple picking. It's so different. And I think when you go on dates like that, it kind of tests like your conversation skills because that's not something where you're just walking around silently picking apples. It's like you're talking, you're having fun, you might be cracking jokes. What would you give it? I would give it to my cousin Walker. Like, <laughs> even, I was gonna go apple picking with him. I just feel like, are we taking your kid with us? Like, this seems like a family date. If, if there was a kid involved, like let's say it's somebody I've been dating for a while and he has a kid mm -hmm. or like maybe I was going to bring Walker along. Okay, cool. We can do that. Are there cocktails at the <laughs> apple picking? Like these little, I, I haven't even had that many cocktails lately, but I'm still wondering. Um, I don't know. I went to a pumpkin patch. We picked out pumpkins. This is with Walker, though, who is But what five. makes it a What makes apple picking a kid activity? We like, just, do you like apples? They're okay. 
Um, but I, I just, I guess I've always just thought about it like me doing it as a little kid. And it's mm -hmm. when I've gone to these things, it's all I always see families there. It just feels like a family friendly activity. So I just want a little kid to come along, and they seem I've to be I've never amazed been apple, apple picking. You haven't? I've never. I been can't apple believe picking. I've done it. And you haven't? Yeah, that's crazy. I'm like, I... <laughs> I mean, it's cute. I didn't see any adults there that were just by themselves, but I mean, I'm sure it's a thing. Um, <laughs> okay, but everybody yeah, yeah. was everybody was just with a family, so I would feel like it would be more fun if I had a little kid there. I feel you. So now I don't want to tell two. the dude that I wanted to go apple picking with that I want to go apple picking. Wait, say that again. I said, now I don't want to tell the dude that I wanted to go apple picking with that I wanted to go out because now I wonder if he's going to be like, this bitch trying to go apple picking. You think she got kids? Uh, he might not think that. <laughs> That's just me. He probably ain't never been apple picking either. So he would he would have no expectations, you know, but I have done it. So I just know. Mm. I mean, but it is like, a, I guess it's a cute thing. And then you can go mm -hmm. get some lunch afterwards. Yeah. Sometimes they have food there. That would be cute. Or That would be cute. I don't know what else you would do. But I'm giving it a two. I'm, you know, I gave it a five. You gave it a two, a two. Bro? That's not wow. really my personality. So for me. I feel you. Nah. Nah. Okay. Okay. Next one. Bay hits you up. And he's like. Put your sneakers on. If you have some hiking sneakers, that'll work. Bring some water. We're going hiking, babe. Let's go. All right. Um, so there's a lot of things that I wonder, like, what's <laughs> up with this, right? So I almost went hiking with this guy, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I... Uh, uh, ugh. I like, which I don't know which one I like better, apple picking or hiking. Both of them are some pieces <laughs> of activities that I don't want to do for real, for real. But I would do it. It's not like I'd be like, oh, hell no. Um, mm -hmm. Hiking. Ugh. If the weather is mild, mm -hmm. I can handle it. And you can get a two. If the weather is horrible, you get a one. Um, hiking... And then I'm not going to really talk that much, probably, because I'm going to mm -hmm. be tired. <laughs> so we're I just like, it's just one. like doing something together, which would be fun. Now, if it ends in hot, sweaty sex, 3.5. <laughs> now, I, in hopes that we're, I don't like, I if we're going to hike, I want it to be like we're hiking to like a gorgeous view or something, mm -hmm. or like a there's waterfall. something there's some excitement at the you're a waterfall and then we get there and you have a lunch, someone set up lunch and I'm going to give that one a three. I'm not going to lie. I don't really, I'll go, I'll go. I'm not going to be the bitch that's like, I don't want to do that. I'll go. Cause I do like nature, but like them long hikes and shit, I do need now that one. I need a snack and I want us to sit down at, I'd rather for just, a little bit. Let's skip it. Let's go to whatever is at the end of this hike, the waterfall, the beautiful antelopes jumping in the distance or whatever the fuck <laughs> and the picnic basket and let's sit down. Mm -hmm. Let's just, why we got a hike here? Is your car broke down? Is it in the shop? What's up? But I would appreciate, I do appreciate the, it's different. different. Like, yeah, yeah, he, like I, I wouldn't tell him that. I don't really want to do this. I would just go as if I was excited, but. I wouldn't go as if I was excited. I would go. Because then he's going to start coming up with more shit. Like, oh, yeah, she really liked this. No, I was just trying to be a good sport and trying something different because I could be wrong. Uh, okay, next one. Um, the zoo. He wants to take you to the zoo to smell all those dirty-ass <laughs> animals and look at them being held in captivity against their <laughs> will like slaves. As much as I love animals, now that I am a little bit more woke about life, I would actually suggest something else because unless a child really wants to go to the zoo and you just want to give them the experience, like we've taken my nephew to the zoo, but like if it was just for two adults to go buy them $70, uh, that's how much the zoo costs? tickets, I, it might be more than that. The oh, zoo is expensive. No. I might be excessive, but it's a lot for adults, but, um, I would suggest something else. I'm going to give the zoo a one because they are abusive. The animals are held in captivity. It's like animal slavery. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm not fucking with the zoo. One, first of all, it's funky. <laughs> Above all else. The zoo, the zoo, 
we could have went to the club and it was going to be like the zoo, just a bunch of wild people running around. And I don't want to do that neither. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. I don't. And I've never liked the zoo, I don't think. Maybe when I was I like, used to love before I was the five, zoo. I have a cute picture of me at the zoo with my dad. And I look like I was enjoying it then, but I was literally two years old. I knew nothing about life. <laughs> um, now that my sense of smell is here, <sighs> And I can remember, it's just like, when I would be at the zoo, I would just be like, this smell. It's like going to farms, like, and you're near the farm animals. I need some space. Well, no, see, I love the farm. I love going to ranches and farms. And I like, you like me and to my get sister, up on the animals? I like to get up on the animals. There's this thing that you do with horses. I forget what it's called, but like, y'all, I grew up the riding horses. The horses don't bother me. But there's this thing that you do with them, like, to, so that they get acquainted with you and they trust you and you take their nose in your hand oh, and you no. you breathe in <laughs> you, you know how their what? nostrils you know how their nostrils are so much bigger than ours mm-hmm. you put your nose in their nostril and you take a big heaping breath like of their breath and they blow their breath out and you oh! sniff it in your nose and and then, <laughs> and then you and then you breathe your breath out you go and then they breathe in all of your breath. And now you're like naturally acquainted. It's a beautiful thing. Sounds smelly. <laughs> I have ridden horses, but not like you where I was like training for some. It's just like a little fun little thing. We're going horseback riding today. That's it. We're not doing all that. I'm looking for the old horse, the mild manner horse that ain't really trying to get bucked, not trying to run. We just going to stroll. We're going to trot. We're not racing. I'm sorry I'm on your back like this with all this weight. We could just I... kick it. We're breathing in nostrils. Like what? <laughs> it lets them like trust you. It's like a. It's really amazing. I remember they can one trust time and we I'm were at a, the fuck away. <laughs> one time, me and my sister put a goat in my mom's van. My mom was like, "What are y'all doing?" And we wanted the goat so bad. His y'all just lucky. put the goat in her van because <laughs> he was y'all following us. <laughs> y'all are like cartoon children <laughs> that just do stuff. Now, what's your mama say? She was like, get the goat out. of There was hay and everything. We were like, we're sneaking this goat home. We're going to put him in our backyard. Whenever I get a home and I have some land, I want three fainting goats, two horses, and a little piglet. For what? Guys, animals are just so pure. <laughs> so uh, the next one... <laughs> Wait, what did you rate the zoo? One? One. Or zero? A one. Okay, one. Well, zero is an option. Zero. <laughs> Don't take me to that shit. Horseback riding okay. we can do, though. I'll give that one a three. I like horseback riding. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not oh. sniffing nostrils and horse breath, but I'll get up mm. on there and ride around a bit and then go have a picnic after we wash our hands thoroughly. Thoroughly, because you will be having mm-hmm. black hands. You're meeting a guy off of a dating app. Okay. He wants to have dinner at Taco Mac. What would you rate that? Why are we having dinner at Taco Mac? <laughs> are we watching a game? <laughs> now, I can go to a sports bar if we're supposed to be watching a game. Y'all know I ain't really watching no games, but I, I've done. I've gone to a sports bar before on a date, and we were mm-hmm. watching a football game. It's like playoffs or something. That's fine. But if even still, I wouldn't choose Taco Mac. Well, yeah, it wasn't Taco Mac that we went to. Of all the places, I don't really like their wings. I'm going to say, you know, can we go to this place? Because I'm going to base it off of the wings. I love chicken wings, as y'all know, unless you're new yeah. here. Now you know, too. But we need to go somewhere with some good wings and a bar. Not Taco Mac. Yeah, if we Mac. were going to go to a sports bar, I would, most, I would like to go to the Beverly. I'm fine with a Twin Peaks. Um, I don't really like Twin sh- Peaks either. The no, you don't want cool. like Twin Peaks? Uh, not their wings. Oh. <laughs> I'm basing it all off the wings. Now, the Beverly is better. I would prefer a sports bar like that where it's a little bit nicer. So mm-hmm. it's not so, like, college-y or um, McDonald's-y. It's interesting that you are comfortable ordering wings on a date. Why? I'm not comfortable ordering chicken wings on a date. I don't know. I get really self-conscious about how you have to eat them. And then get I mean, under do you my put nails. the whole thing in your mouth? I mean, I take the chicken wing and I'm like, with your lips. I just, I bring it close, hold my head down, and I eat the wing. I don't eat the wings like a barbarian, so yeah, I don't mind. I love wings, and I know that I eat them 
in a way where like when I order wings, guys, they always look like how she about to eat these wings, right? I can just see it on their face. <laughs> so I'll eat the wings and then they'll say, you don't have to try to eat all cute. You can eat the wings. And I'm like, well, this is just how I normally eat the wings. I wasn't even worried mm -hmm. about you. The wings are good. So I'm just in my plate. Um, and they're like, <laughs> you left a lot of meat on them. Go ahead and clean. I'm like, I don't clean the meat off of the bone. Like I, I really like the outside of the sauce. Um, yeah. So I don't eat them crazy, so I don't mind. But I've seen some people eat some chicken wings I've and they put the whole thing in their mouth and pull wings. it out. And it's like, oh, no. wow, you are not, you're not playing. I would give that date, I'm actually giving it a zero and I'm blocking you. <gasps> I would just give it a two. It's boring, but it's got food, the most important thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, now this one I will probably give a zero. <laughs> the Juicy Crab. I went on a date to the Juicy Crab a week ago. I feel like that's something where you just like, you hanging out with your girls or something or whatever. First of all, I think the Juicy Crab is overrated. I think it's really good. And I think that's crazy coming from me because I remember when I remember when you were going to the Juicy Crab and I was like, I don't see how people are going to the Juicy Crab. You put that bib mm -hmm. on, everybody's looking all crazy. Like mm -hmm. they just waiting to tear some shit up, looking all lethargic. Mm -hmm. Mitchell, well, the, when I went to the Juicy Crab, I was like, oh. Oh, now you see. Now I see. And it was very good. I'm actually going to give the Juicy Crab a three. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to block him for Taco Mac, but give the Juicy Crab a three. Wow. I am. Yeah, I'm I'm not a, I can eat the Juicy Crab, but I'm not a huge fan of it. The line a lot of times mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Like the wait, you have to wait so long. That's something that I've we, never waited. Yeah. Really? So when they're busy, yeah. It can be a wow. rather extensive wait. Now they have multiple locations in the Atlanta area. But before, when they were just over there off Cobb Parkway, it was people would be waiting for hours for that food. That's wow. ridiculous. Um, After I finished yeah. my two-day detox, I hit up one of the bays and was like, he was like, well, what you want to eat? I know you're going to be hungry. I was like, I really want to go to the Juicy Crab. <laughs> We pulled up to the juice. You had a detox and then had juicy crap. <laughs> Toxins all the way back in my body. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my ponytail is too tight and my head hurts. But listen, you guys, every Monday we are giving you new bonus content. Turn up. It's Monday. Take a listen. My first threesome was with a stripper. As soon yes. I was in there with some drug dealers, we had a great threesome. She kind of set me up and it kind of was like prostitution, but it was a great experience. <laughs> After we fucked the nigga, she was like, he was supposed to pay us. And I was like, I didn't know that. I thought we was. Just, I thought it was right. a random. Wait, what were you about to say? I'm like, wait, so how, how does she ask you though? So, how does she ask so we had, her and I had already. Okay, y'all, if you had a chance to join our live Patreon workout last Sunday, then you had a taste of what the Total Body 21 program is about. Total Body 21 has a selection of awesome programs, including one for teens. No equipment is needed, meal guides are included, and my favorite part, it's just 21 minutes for 21 days, and then you get Dream Abs. Right now, Total Body 21 is offering a free, that's right, free seven day ab workout. Go to totalbody21.com right now to join. Total Body 21's creator, Leticia Gardner, is also collecting donations to raise enough money to feed over 300 families in need in the Atlanta metro area for Thanksgiving. If you are interested in donating, the link and how to donate are in the episode's description. And now, let's get back to the show. It's a good game. Um, before we get into today's discussion, I'm going to give you guys the weird sex for the week. Okay. You said a man is not a necessity, a man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Okay, so, I mean, Veterans Day was yesterday, but whatever. Uh, so... There's this place in Florida <coughs> called 
Sausage Castle. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, a few years ago, I don't know if, they're, if they did it this year, but a few years ago, they were giving out free blowjobs to veterans on Veterans Day. And I'm like, what the fuck kind of place is this? So I'm like looking it up like, how, this isn't Nevada. How are you just giving out blowjobs? So um, what was I about to say? So the, the free blowjobs were for any veteran who came through the place. Um, the Sausage Castle, in case you're wondering, they call themselves the wildest house in America. And it's basically like a Willy Wonka chocolate factory. But instead of chocolate, it's all kind of freak nasty sex shit. So um, this guy, Mike Busey, is the owner of it. And um, he said he's Gary Busey's nephew, but who cares? It doesn't even matter. I don't know why I left that little highlight in the story. Um, So they had different porn stars there. One of them was Nadia Alicia. Another one was Jenny Jizz. And they were just there hanging out all day, honoring the men by saluting their dicks with their mouths. Um, and you know, it's not just sex at the sausage castle, which is what I thought it was. And I felt like the government is probably going to come and like shut that shit down, but they were also giving free dinner, free haircuts. You could get tatted Uh up. Um, you could also enjoy a man spa day. Um, they had all kind of stuff and you know, the best part is you can get an orgasm at the end. What more do you really need? Um, but anyway, yeah. So Jenny Jizz and Nadia Alicia and some of their other porn star friends were um, trying to suck dick to honor those who have served our country. Um, I wonder how many men were going in lying. What about the women veterans? They eat some pussy? Well, they weren't, um, no. I guess they said they didn't matter. I don't know. But they were just giving out blowjobs. Maybe they had to go to some other kind of castle. Yeah, the patty. (laughs) They had to go somewhere else to get their pussies ate. I don't know. That is funny. I wonder how many men were like, actually, I'm going to pass on the blowjob. I'll just take the number three. (laughs) Uh, uh, Yeah, all flats. I would just be like, Thanks, guys. what the fuck? <laughs> Imagine, you know, you, you're you married to somebody who's a veteran and they're like, I want to go to the Sausage Castle. And you're thinking it's like if this you world sit your sausage of sausage. Head ass down. And like, I'm thinking, oh, you got kielbasa, you've got some bratwurst, Italian sausage, smoked sausage, boudin. <laughs> Maybe some Beyond Dewey. Meat sausage. Yeah. And we get there. This nigga and it's got like, his dick sucked. This is a sex castle. Hell no. Anyway, that's weird sex for the week. Weird sex. That and that was really that's really weird. That was weird. Um, wow. But all that food talk is a great transition into um Thanksgiving traditions. And we kind of talked about this in the beginning, but like favorite side dishes. My favorite side dishes are candy yams, um, collard greens, macaroni and cheese. Those are the things that I have to have. I also love mm-hmm. Brussels sprouts. So I'm going to have some Brussels sprouts in there too. But I have to have those three. I have to have stuffing, dressing, um, mm-hmm. macaroni and cheese. Mm-hmm. You don't like dressing? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that soggy bread crumble mix. I hate it. <laughs> macaroni and cheese definitely yams and um collard, collard greens and potato salad i like potato salad depending on who makes it um yeah. if i am going to be at my great aunt's house or her daughter's house they make it the same excellent mm-hmm. my aunt lita makes an excellent potato salad we had it last year mm-hmm. that's about it my dad makes a phenomenal potato salad like everything it's just like a perfect creaminess the the potatoes are the right texture they're not too mushy not too crunchy i can't stand a mushy potato salad it's like i can't stand a mushy potato salad potatoes with yeah but i also don't like when they're too crunchy and i also don't like when the potato salad's too yellow like come on how you only supposed to put a little dash of mustard don't i like mustard um i don't know i don't make potato salad so i don't know what the ratio should be i like for mine to be a little yellow it doesn't need to be like um pure yellow but i want to see some yellow i don't want my potato salad to look white right just like a a southern style potato salad i like eggs in it too with the paprika sprinkled bit. on the top. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, do you what's like your role? 
Um, my role is I'm always the helper. Like, like I step in. Chef? Yeah, like when hands are needed. Um, my sister be trying to act like she be helping, but she don't. She'll like step in and make like some brownies or something at the very end, and then she'll leave them in the oven and be like, "Can you finish them off for me?" But like, <laughs> I I really like help. My mom loves doing the whole meal, mm-hmm. but I always like am the backup. Like I come in, she'll like kind of prep everything and I'll start seasoning or rinsing and just like being there for the finisher offer. Mm. Um, my role outside of dinner is I am typically the funny one between <laughs> me and my brother. You know, we get, I get the game started. We get the people laughing. Mm-hmm. No one really drinks except for me. So I start popping the <laughs> bottles. <laughs> Nobody in my family like. drinks. To have a Thanksgiving weird. being the only one drinking. I feel like those are some of the only times when I'm a responsible drinker because I don't want to be drunk in front of my family because no one else is drinking. So it's like after that first glass and I start getting silly, everyone knows. It's like, okay, <laughs> she's drunk. And I'm like, y'all don't even know you how know I really get when I'm drunk. Yeah. <laughs> We'll be. I'll be like buying bottles for like you know wine and maybe mm-hmm. get something from margarita. My mom's like, "Who's all drinking?" And I'm like, "Me." But like, just in case somebody wants to, she's like, "No one does, but you know, nothing's changed." <laughs> Y'all might be want to. What's live your a role? I am the cook. I am in charge of the food. Um, usually, ahead of time, I will be working with whoever is going to assist me. Um, mm-hmm. sometimes it's me and my aunt Sean, like that's how it was last year. We'll come up with a menu together and we kind of divide up the things. But, um, most of the big heavy duty cooking goes to me. Um, other people like to test the waters and they want to submit a dish. So I will review their submission and see if it's all right. Like, all right, we can do it. Um, I also like to lead the competition Um, because the meal is the main part. We're not really competing with main dish Mm -hmm. items. Desserts is where we have room for competition. So I will um, let the people know, okay, we are having a sweet potato pie competition this year. I am the reigning champion for several years now, but I let the people come and they can try me if they want to. And whoever doesn't cook, but only eats, they get to be the judge. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll do competitions. Um, Sean usually does like, she's usually in charge of liquor, wine and stuff. She's when we're traveling, she's bringing cases of wine. Like we're, we will have the drinks and my family will drink my, the older people who probably should not be drinking. They'll be like, give me a little sip of that sweet wine. Just a little sip, <laughs> you know? Um, and then like, uh, what else do I do around the holidays? I'm usually talking a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. and then once the questions start coming that I don't like, I try to like disappear and go get on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I just dip up. If we're at home in Texas, I just kind of slip away into my room. Cause I'm, it's, it's, yeah, it's fun and it's entertaining till they get too inquisitive. Mm -hmm. Um, I have found that lately, past couple of years, never fails any family function, somebody is going to try and pull me aside to talk about sex. And that just start happening? Um, I would say within the past three or four years, just over the course of doing the show, um, Mm -hmm. they want to talk to me about their sex life and about trying things or like what I think about certain things. And I'm like cringing because these are my older family members. These aren't like my siblings. That's all I got that's my age or my siblings. Everybody else Mm -hmm. is older. What is going on here? And then they do it so it's not like something that the whole family knows about. And I'm like, why does it have to be me? You couldn't ask your sister or your brother. At least they pull you aside in private. My family doesn't do it, but my mom's friends, when they come over, they do it and they just do it in front of everyone. And then what I'm will just they like, say? I listened to episode 157. You know, when you was, when y'all was talking about, you know, sometimes maybe you just are just sucking a little wee wee or, well, you know, I'd still be, and I'd be like, They'll ask me about the podcast, but they don't go into detail like that. But they'll want to talk about stuff. Oh, I saw you had such and such on the show. Oh, what was this? I heard y'all talking about this. Why are y'all always talking about threesomes? One of my aunts asked me that. And I was like, why are you asking me this? I mean, you listen to the episode, even though I've asked you not to. Like, you know, I tell my family don't listen. <laughs> and if you listen, don't talk don't to listen. me about it. They don't care. They feel like they my can do what they want. My family doesn't listen, but her, their friends do. My mom's friends, we listen and, and like, did you listen to this week? They watch the Fox Soul. They're like, did you watch the Fox? That's why my mom watched it. I was like, they really be listening. Like, <laughs> I'm like, are y'all having wild sex lives like us? They well, probably are. 
They probably are because now that I think I about mean, it, most of them are single. I would hope I was having a good sex life no matter how old I was. Yeah, you don't think you'll ever just like calm down and what? be like, and not have I sex? Don't need sex. Yeah. No. <laughs> You're like, excuse me. <laughs> why would I? Why would I want to do that? I mean, I guess if like I had to get my pussy sewn, uh, sewn shut, but like, why would I ever have to do that? So no. Yeah. Why? Mm -mm. I, now that I think about it, me too. It's like, I think why would sex I stop would, having sex? Yeah, sex would change probably, um, but I'm still going to want it. It feels good. All on yeah. the inside parts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel lonely around the holidays when you're... I single i do i was just talking to my sister about this today and she was like you do she's like i've never felt that i was like you're married she was like well even before i was married when i was single she was like i've never just felt that loneliness and i was like i mean i guess it's a little different like you're also working news you're always around people always and i was like i you know if i'm not dating anyone the loneliness kicks in when i'm home on a cold night by myself mm -hmm. with no christmas tree like you know what I mean? It's like when I used to a couple years ago, even if I wasn't with my family leading up to the holidays, I was with Carlos mm -hmm. and we would decorate the tree together. And like, you know, we would still be in the house cozy together. Mm -hmm. And so now, yeah, I do get a little bit lonely. I want to have matching sweaters with Bay. I want someone Why to like- Why don't you just do it with your friends until you get the Bay? I mean, that you can I do will, it. but there's still a lonely- -ness that comes with it because I want the companionship of a nigga, of a man. I want a man. I don't always like, like doing stuff with friends is great, but sometimes like I'll be like another friend date. You uh, wanted to end with like some stuff your friends can't give you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to flirt and hold hands and kiss. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even when I do get my nigga, I still hope my friends come around and like decorate the tree with me. But I be getting lonely, bro. Like, I can't tell you how many times in the day, like, I just, if a song comes on or I think about something, I just start crying. About your loneliness? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you look so concerned. Yeah, I didn't know you felt like that. That's sad. Um, I don't know. I guess for me, um, I don't really, I mean, I have my lonely moments just in life in general. But yeah. as far as the holidays go, I don't think about it too much until I'm like actually with my family or we're getting close to it. And they're like, are you bringing somebody home this year? And I'm like, mm. I'm 32. What's going to be different? <laughs> I've never brought anyone home for the holidays. Why would I start now? I'm very mm. single. Um, even if I wasn't, I, I think I've said this on the show before and people probably thought I was joking. We need to be practically married before you can come to my family functions. Um, if we're dating, because I wanted to, I need you to be locked in there pretty strong. Mm -hmm. My family's a wild bunch. I don't know what will come out of their mouths. I don't want them to scare you away. And I mm. also don't want, because I've seen this happen, not with me, but with other people. I don't want to bring somebody to Thanksgiving or Christmas this year. And y'all are asking about him for years to come when he's not around anymore. Oh I don't my want God. people That's mixing up worst. names and stories. Like I've seen it too much. Even like... When my mom is around, for example, she's come out here and she'll think that I have something going on with a guy friend. She won't let it go. I can be on the phone with a man. Doesn't matter the relationship between us. She wants to say, oh, is that such and such some other man's name that's just a friend or maybe not even actually my friend or somebody I was on the phone with. Stop calling out names. You don't know who I'm on the phone with. What if I am on the phone with somebody I'm dating and you talk about, oh, is that Christopher? Uh, who is and it's not, and you're like, and I'm on the phone with brain. Jason. Like, what? Like, no. So, mm -mm. so, but back to the loneliness. Um, sometimes I do want to have somebody to spend the holidays with, but I don't. So I just try not to dwell on it. I think I just, I just don't think about it, and I think about mm -hmm. what I do have. And I just try to be grateful for that. And that's probably the only thing that keeps me from feeling lonely. Because if I sat around mm -hmm. and thought about it a lot, I'd probably feel different. But I just I just don't let myself do it because that could be mm -hmm. very sad. 
Um, it can get it can get sad, especially when they start lighting up the trees and you're in the shopping centers and it's like cute and they have the Christmas music I'm tired playing of seeing the and couples just and nuts roasting and it's supposed to be a happy playful song and you just start crying because mm. you're the chestnuts are roasting on the open fire and you're just roasting them for yourself now a few years ago there was a christmas i did not go home i can't remember why i didn't go home for christmas but i was here by myself that was a sad christmas i cried all day that, that's sad have you ever actually roasted chestnuts on an open fire hell no i wonder if that's good if that's tasty i don't even know if i've had a chestnut I don't think I've had a chestnut, but I, now that I think he's like chestnuts roasting. And then I'm like, I'm trying to think of who got a fireplace. Me <laughs> I don't have I, a fireplace. I want to try a roasted chestnut on an open fire. That's I'm putting that on a date night. I want to roast chestnuts on an open fire. I guess maybe some people have those. If you don't have a fireplace, but you have a house, you might have one of those fire pits in the backyard. Now you got me thinking. Can you hear these those niggas police? got a fire pit in the backyard so I can go try this. What'd you say? Can you hear the police sirens? Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I was like, it sounds like I live in goddamn Compton. Nope. I mean, uh, what's, what's going no, on? But, <laughs> but another thing that I was thinking about, too, that kind of made me feel lonely for a little while. And then I had to like think of something else. So I didn't start crying. But um, so my sister is doing a Christmas Eve party this year and so she loves christmas and she feels like christmas should be her holiday because she's the one with the kids i agree thanksgiving is mine christmas is hers so she's gonna do like this annual christmas eve party this year's theme is pajamas so i was like oh i don't mean this any type of way i love my brother-in-law but i just be forgetting about him um so i'm like are you and the girls gonna match forgetting she has a whole husband to consider mm -hmm. i don't remember what she said but i was like well don't leave me out because i don't want to be the only person that doesn't have anybody to be matched up with yeah because it's just gonna be yeah. me in my pajamas and i was like if they leave me out and i have nobody to match with i'm just gonna come in something inappropriate and they i bet they won't do that no, get some lingerie <laughs> they're gonna be like whoa the okay fuck? this is kid cocktails friendly. has arrived <laughs> Um, another time when I used to feel really lonely in my life, um, when I was a flight attendant, mm. I always say this on holidays and shit, pray for the flight attendants, play for the crew life, because that shit is depressing. I don't care how luxurious or cute or fun, or I travel all the time. Flight attendants try to make it seem them hoes be in their room crying on Christmas the whole week because you're gone on mm -hmm. Thanksgiving the whole week because you're gone ain't nobody with by the time you get home for your leftovers they're rotten on New Year's <laughs> <Right>. Eve <laughs> All the all the major holidays, you are working because people are traveling. You're working the most. I would just sit in my room and cry. And like the pilots and stuff, I flew private. So it wasn't even like I had a whole crew of like seven people. It was me and two old ass white men. So I, they would be like, well, just come on. We're all going to walk down to Denny's and have dinner. Denny. And I used to be like, I'm fine. Y'all can leave me out of it. And I would just sit in my room and cry and order um, room room service and just, tr I would even turn my phone off. My family would be like, where are you at? Because the listening to everyone's joyful laughs and mm -hmm. singing Christmas, I, it would make me cry. That is, the, that is the worst. That's one of the reasons why I stopped being a flight attendant. Like it was just like, I'm good on this. I don't want this to be my life. You just go, you just get used to not celebrating holidays. I never want to get used to that. Yeah, that's sad. I do look forward to the holidays mm -hmm. every year, especially Thanksgiving, but Christmas too. Christmas is for the kids. And now we've got kids in the family, so it's exciting again. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, that makes it so much fun. Mm -hmm. Um, have you ever been someone's Thanksgiving dinner date? No. Nope. Holiday? Nope. Mm -mm. So um, I have not. Now I've been invited to spend the Thanksgiving and Christmas one year. And it's like, why the fuck are you inviting me? Because <laughs> maybe once or twice it was a guy that I was actually seeing and things were like cool between us. But I was like, I don't really want to go and be a part of your traditions because I don't think I'm going to like them and I don't want to be sitting there with my face screwed up. We'll, we'll see each other after the you holiday. You said that? Yeah. Because he's telling me like about what his family does. I don't want to do that. I like I like my holidays and I like them yeah. in my Southern American way. And I don't, I don't want all this extra stuff that... Mm -mm especially for Thanksgiving. But I also, so this, so he, this one guy I was dating, 
um he invited me to thanksgiving i didn't want to do it and i was going out of town his family was here no another guy was like oh i would love for you to come over for christmas this was the year i stayed home and i was by myself and i cried all day on christmas mm -hmm. he was like oh you can come spend christmas with me and my family i'll come pick you up blah blah, blah. i would love for you to meet them anyway nigga i don't like you you will <laughs> have your family thinking that something is up you're gonna think something is up because i've agreed to go with you and spend this holiday with you no not for jesus's birthday celebration we're not doing this no 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 i'd rather be alone I, and cry but no i've not been anyone's date um i've never mm -mm. been anyone's date either i've been invited one time uh well no, i'm not gonna include skylar that was such a long time ago but like i did i never even was his thanksgiving dinner date but uh my um, six a bay he invited me to go to his family's thanksgiving dinner and i was gonna go and then we broke up on my birthday and then i still hit him up <laughs> I still hit him up when Thanksgiving, when the time, when the time frame came around, I was like, hey, I was like, are you, do you still want me to come to Thanksgiving with you? And he was like, no, I think I'm good. <laughs> Kiki. Have you guys ever had secondhand embarrassment? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Dina, why did you call him? Were you just like I hopeful can't. or you just weren't over I was it? very hopeful. It was just like when it happened, when we broke up and I still expected him to be my plus one to my sister's wedding. And then I had a whole breakdown when I got there and saw the little name things. Cause he did, he really was like, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. And I was like, you don't. And he didn't come. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't go with him to his Thanksgiving dinner. And I was so sad, but Hey, look, such is life. You live and you learn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, hopefully. <laughs> but I've never been someone's um anyone's holiday. Um, I think I would be a little nervous. Um, yeah, I would be. It's a lot. It's a lot meeting someone's whole family. Those are the the holidays where you're meeting whole families, and the family is comfortable. Like they're in the groove. Very. They know how the different characters are. They get it. Last year, okay, I didn't have a holiday. But one of my friends who spent Thanksgiving with us, she had a couple. I'm not going to say any names. <laughs> I don't know who be listening. Um, but she had a couple of dates. So we did different things every day for Thanksgiving. We had like a game night one night and tacos. We had regular Thanksgiving dinner. But at Thanksgiving mm -hmm. brunch, we did all this stuff. So she had dates. And so she brings some dates. Um, my mom is flirting with all of the dates. Um and she got drunk and she my aunt's ex came to, she was asking about the ex this is what makes me think like your family is always going to remember that one person and they bring him up all the time that they love yeah so she was like well let me call him and see what he's up to so he comes my mom is flirting with him everybody's flirting everybody's drunk i'm like if these were new people who had never been around each other it, like if this was a my new guy is here with my family. My family is used to this. We expected this to happen. We know how it goes. I could mm. see that scaring somebody, y'all. Uh-uh. And then if I was going to somebody else's family and they're just like so used to each other, they know how they act, they know the different personality types and stuff, I would be nervous because I want to give a good first impression, but I don't mm -hmm. want to come off stuck up. And that's difficult for me. Um and if the food isn't good i'm gonna be fighting the looks on my face like i wouldn't say anything but the looks oh my god that is so against the rule i would never be like who made the macaroni and cheese it's yeah. watery that's a quick way to get jumped at the dinner i would just be, i wouldn't even say anything to him probably probably yeah that's um, a no-no that's a no-no but i'm just gonna be you like, can't be like man i'm hungry like imagine being yeah. at a thanksgiving dinner table and there's all this food that you don't want to eat and everybody hears your stomach growling like, I would have like some little girl. cheese and nuts in my purse and just excuse myself to the restroom to go gobble them down or something. I would just eat the nasty food <gasps> and just like, yeah, I would just play the part. And, oh my God. If it was okay, that's one thing. But if it's nasty, where you want to turn I that plate over time, upside down. It wasn't a holiday, but one of my friends was in town 
and uh, he's an artist and he was staying with, I think his manager or something. He invites me over there at a nice pool and like a pool house. We go over there. I'm staying there. He invites me that they, the people that own the house, were like, do y'all want to come in and have dinner? And like, we're all gonna have a big dinner in the house. Go have a dinner in the house. The food was disgusting. I lied and said I was vegan. And this was before I had ever even tried being vegan. And I just said I was vegan and just put some, I was like, it's fine. They're like, oh, we didn't know. I was like, it is so fine. I'll just eat some, do you have lettuce? Like they had salad. And I was just like, I'll just have a little salad. You got some lemon? That was a smart totally idea. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you do that at Thanksgiving, almost everything has meat juice in it, like, or a broth. So I can't even. That's a good tip. I'm I'm actually vegan right now. Who would believe that for me? (laughs) Some people I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I'm on a weight loss journey right now. I've decided to go vegan. Kiki, how would you feel if you were dating someone? Let's say you're dating him for... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're say you're dating for like four months in okay and he doesn't even mention inviting you to his family dinner we're at four months right now you're at four months and he doesn't even mention it he's just like oh what are you doing for the holidays i don't think my feelings would be hurt because i wouldn't be inviting him to mine mm-hmm. so yeah, I mean, if he asked me what I was doing, I would tell him. Now, if he asked me what I was doing and I said I wasn't doing anything and he has and plans he still didn't here you. in Atlanta and I can't come over and get a plate, my feelings would be hurt. Yeah, my feelings would be hurt too. But I have invited people to share dinner with my family that I know don't have anybody. Because they're like, we talk about being lonely just because we don't have a nigga, mm-hmm. but there are some people that truly feel a a type of loneliness that I've never felt like you don't have actual family. Yeah. And you or have your to get family on Instagram doesn't do and... anything. Yeah. Now those people the can pers- come. Yeah, no absolutely. I, I had a friend like that who I was dating, the one who ended up ghosting me as soon as quarantine hit. Um, but he didn't have anything to do for Thanksgiving and he was just lonely and he does a lot of studio stuff. You know, those people are always up, always working at odd hours. And I was like, you are more than welcome to come and spend. This was when my family came here and we went to Stone Mountain to my cousins. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you are more than welcome to like come and have dinner with my family. I don't want you feeling lonely. There have been times when I've been lonely and I wished people, somebody would have invited me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you know this nigga didn't even come? I was so mad. I was like, that's wrong. Did he it say was he rude. wasn't going to come? He told me after we had like finished eating, hey, I don't think I'm going to make it. And I was like, you know what? Fuck you, nigga. Because then I had already ate. told everybody he was coming. Yeah. And then my family was like, where's your little friend? And mm-hmm. it looked like I just got stood up. I was like. Oh. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, people. When to, I hate when people do that. Because it's like, especially at a dinner, people make room to accommodate you. Mm-hmm. You don't know if we were being super formal and had place settings. Um, and now there's this empty seat. You don't know who didn't get to come because you said you were coming. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it's rude. I don't like it. I don't like it one yeah. bit. Do you like being the only single one at holiday dinner? Um, I mean, when I'm shit gets a little tense one. between the couples, I'd be like, thank God. But, <laughs> but <laughs> I no. I hate when there's moments like that. No, I don't like being the only single one because then I feel like, like of the grandkids, I'm the oldest, but I feel like I gotta sit at the kid table. <laughs> I mean, I don't, but that's just how it feels. I feel childish. Yeah, me and Zane just be ducked away. Like, you want to play cards? I be trying to go play with the kids at a at a certain time because then they're like, "When are you gonna bring somebody home?" Like last year, I felt so much pressure, especially because everybody was out here. So then I guess they mm. were like, "Well, you didn't have a reason not to have somebody because you're in Atlanta." Like, uh, we could see if we were all traveling to Louisiana, having mm-hmm. to get hotels and all of this extra stuff. Um, but we're here, like, you don't have anybody coming. Then my friends who I invited, they had men that were coming and they're like, well, where's your man at? And I told you, um, most of my family thinks I'm a lesbian. I'm pretty sure. So, <laughs> so, cause I never bring a man around, um, to the holiday functions and stuff. But I'm like, I'm not dating anyone. Seriously. I'm not just bringing, um, my flavor of the week. Mm-hmm. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, he going to think I like him more than I do. No. Mm-hmm. And y'all going to talk about them later. But yeah, um, I felt a lot of pressure. I don't like being the only single one. They're always asking me, where's my man? When am I going to have some babies? My grandparents mm-hmm. are getting older. So they're like, I mean, are we going to be, are we going to live long enough to see you settle down? They do not say that. Yeah. And I'm just like, y'all, I got other stuff I- going on besides who I'm dating. 
well, who I'm not dating. Right. There are other great things um, going on. <laughs> um, how do you think that couples, if you were in a relationship, how would you pick whose family you're going to? Like, let's say you meet someone who he is also, and he checked all the marks. He is coming to dinner. You feel comfortable bringing him. But what if he's really close with his family too? And he's like, well, do you want to split the holidays? Do you just want to go separately? Or do you want, we'll go to your family for Thanksgiving. Then we go to mine for Christmas. How would you split that? I think I would prefer to split them. Like, okay, we'll do my family for one of the holidays and yours for the Mm -hmm. other. Um, I wouldn't, especially if I was married, I wouldn't want to really spend them separate. Um, And then I would also ask, like, can we host something so then Mm. everybody can come? Oh, that makes it easier. Um, Because, like, Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving is mine. So (laughs) we can go spend (laughs) Christmas with your family. I feel like more people are particular about Christmas anyway. Mm-hmm. Then Thanksgiving, so I feel like it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I would hope, but Thanksgiving, I I want to have what I want to have for Thanksgiving. I feel like we need to talk about like if I met someone who they're just as close and like they're my mom does holidays like to perfection, and so I would be like, well, I need let's really talk about this and, and talk about the details. I'm going to be mad if we go to your house for any of the holidays and your family doesn't do anything. You know how some people just sit around and like, it's just, we're watching TV and wh- what are we doing? If they don't have stuff planned and there's no tradition, I don't, why do we need to go Traditions to like your what? family? Like games or? Games. We're going to have matching pajamas. We're going to do pictures. We're going to go see the lights. Mm-hmm. Like there's one day of activity where we actually leave the house and like, you know what I mean? We go to Interlock and in Dallas, we go to Interlock and look at the houses and look at the lights and get hot cocoa or cider. Like me, my mom and my sister, the day before Thanksgiving, we go to the grocery store late, late, late at night. We do this every year. My mom has always written down the everything we need to get from the grocery store on the back of a used envelope. And we all go, we have our pajamas on and we go shopping and we're talking to people. Like it just needs to be like, Fun and family oriented. If it's if it's like we go and there's a whole bunch of strange relationship of estranged relationships and everyone's like it's dramatic. Babe, why do we need to go? You don't even like your family. <laughs> I feel you. On Come that. on, like let's go be surrounded by love. Yeah, and I think sometimes people feel like so obligated to do certain things at the holidays. Like you said, if you don't even like it, why are you doing it? I was talking to my <laughs> sister about that, and I was like, you know. We don't, like, somebody was upset with her. I can't remember who it was. Somebody was kind of upset with her that she and her family were trying to do their own thing for Christmas Mm -hmm. and invite other people to come. But she's like, I'm tired of saying yes to things that I don't really want to do. And I want to make my own traditions for my family. Like, we don't really have real traditions for the holidays. We have things that we do, but I wouldn't really call it tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, like activity wise, uh, there mm-hmm. are some things that happen. We don't always want to happen, but it happens every year. Um, <laughs> but not traditions. <laughs> and so my sister and I, we talked about it and we were like, we want to have those family traditions, but we're not going to wait on somebody else to make it happen. We're just going to start creating traditions. So that's how mm-hmm. she started doing these Christmas parties. And you know, she go. They spend Thanksgiving with her husband's family, so she's not been able to experience one of my Thanksgivings. But hopefully, they can um, leave them one year and come. <laughs> and then also for Christmas, like for our Christmas dinner, I don't know about you, I get tired of uh, after we've had the Thanksgiving food, we don't need to have it on Christmas. Mm-hmm. So, oh no! So we will. Sw- I like. We'll switch every it up. year when my mom says we're gonna switch it up. I'll be like, why? Oh, we, we lo- only get those meals twice a year. They're just too close together. Um, so we have done <laughs> different themes for Christmas for like the past couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. was it last? It was the year before last. I think we did a seafood theme. That was really fun. Very expensive, but a lot of fun. Um, we have done, we've done the traditional, we've done Italian, I think one year and Tex-Mex one year and we'll make Mm -hmm. like big holiday things, but it'll just be different food. I don't want another turkey. I can do without the turkey, but then I just do want the turkey because it's tradition. It's like a little turkey Mm -hmm. and we'd be naming him and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what we're going to do for Christmas this year. I have to come up with a menu for the Christmas party. Um, and it's a midnight brunch. 
Um, but for Christmas dinner, I don't know what we're going to do, but it probably won't be traditional. I don't know. Do you guys play traditional like music? Like, do you have like something that you always play? We always play Mariah Carey Christmas and we start it on Thanksgiving dinner. Um, we ah. play all the black Christmas songs. Mariah Carey, of course. Last year I yes. made a Thanksgiving playlist and it had like holiday music in it. But then we also just had old school R&B classics. But we just mm -hmm. love R&B. So it'll be all kind of stuff. But I do love the Christmas music. I love a, the Mariah Carey Christmas album, the classic one. one. Like her, mm -hmm. yeah. Queen Christmas. I need to play that tomorrow. Get in the spirit, so my food will come out Get good. You got to play good spirit. music when you're cooking for the holidays, so that your food comes out great. You have to do it when you're wrapping presents as well. When it gets closer to Christmas, um, and um, also I've posted on Twitter what I want for Christmas, just in case any of these men who <laughs> um, claim that they're interested in me right now are listening. And you said that you don't. If you just want to pretend like you just knew what I wanted, just go look at my tweets. I <laughs> love that idea. And I love that idea. I think I'm going to copy you. Do it. <laughs> I just keep, great I'm just going to keep tweeting and this is what I want for Christmas. I'd really like this for Christmas and it'd just be lots of things. I'll also post my Amazon wish list link and yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the holidays. We ain't got no real traditions other than I get very serious about cooking for Thanksgiving. Um, we play games, we get drunk. Somebody gets mad at somebody. And then my grandpa makes them apologize and it feels like the end of a Tyler Perry movie when the elder of the family is like, this is this is the life lesson we need to learn. And then everybody goes home. And it's like, dang, grandpa. Um, well, I guess, do you want to move on to Indecisive Diane? Yeah. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Hey, ladies, it's me, Indecisive Diane. The holidays are coming up. Do you have your Christmas list ready? <laughs> we'll go over that next week. There's a place, it's called the Consulate. It's on 10th Street. It's super cute. It's a dark bar. Literally, it's dark inside. You feel like you're in New York, my hometown. Go there on a date. The food isn't that great. But listen, the cocktails, they'll get you there, and they might get you rent paid. <laughs> Have a great show, ladies. Bye. Okay, and we are back from Indecisive Diane, and it is time for the advice. Remember, if you have a question that you want to ask us, send it to us, askcocktails at gmail.com. So I've got one pulled up, and it says, good morning, ladies. This is B again. I need your help with a reconnection problem. From middle school to now in 2020, girl. <laughs> middle school? I wonder how old she is. Okay, I'm lost. Help. He's an Aries, shaking my head. I know, right? Ugh. Aries, what's wrong with the Aries? I, what is wrong? I never really heard much about them. Me either. The only Aries I know, um, he might not be a good man, but he's good at what he's good at, okay? Um, anyway, <laughs> he, an Aries and I'm a Virgo, so you know we don't mix half the time. Hmm. Interesting. I just need to know if I'm making the right moves with this young crush of mine. I'll say this. Um, we've been talking for eight months. We're getting to know one another and I'm kind of glad where we are probably for a long time. I have fears of getting hurt again. And the last time I said yes to dating, I was battling with depression and anxiety attacks. So, you know, it was my last for relationships. Hmm. I don't think you proofread this. Okay. Dating that guy really took a big toll on me. Now, how, now how I am now. I'm scared to even let someone in. To be honest, I'd rather have fuck buddies and stay single for a long time until I'm 80 years old. Okay, now I understand. You guys, my mindset, <laughs> you guys, my mindset is oh, when feeling great. like all the guys are struggling hobos. Girl, what? <sighs> there are missing words in here, but I think I think we're able to grasp what you're trying to say. Um, are we? Well, she's just overthinking everything, and so she doesn't want to get hurt. She'd rather just have fuck buddies and stay okay. single. Um, 
I don't know where the struggling hobos came in. She's not, um, Mm -hmm. she's not really ready to fall for someone. She's scared to put her all in again, knowing she's going to get hurt. Even though they say the the same lines, like I'm not that guy. I would never hurt you. You know, the list goes on. I have a sick weakness. Um, I have a sick weakness. Um, he'll say, I'll say he does bring me joy. We have a lot of things in common too much at that. But I adore it. My mom likes him more than the others I did bring around. Mm-hmm. Also, his mother said the same thing. I just want to know, do I still take my time with him or after the 12 months of being friends, try the dating pool again? I'm 25. He's 23. And I still have a full life ahead of me to focus on my dreams. What? He's never a distraction of what I love doing, but he's a distraction to the point I want him more than just a benefit relationship. I just want to know if it's worth putting a couple of my toes in the pool. And I, okay, so it sounds like she has been fucking this man. Um, and she wants to be with him or she doesn't want to be She wants to, but him. she's scared to get hurt. So she's like trying not to even test the waters and just keep it at a fuck buddy level so that she doesn't even go down that path. Um, that does not make sense, bro. Like, and we wait for have we all had that thought before, care. but like, yeah. I just don't think you can try to like stop yourself from getting hurt before it happens. Then you're, I feel like you'll be more hurt than if you would have just let you have to life just run its course. Yeah, you just got to do what it's going to do. You're going to get your heart stomped on and your feelings hurt in, in like and love and in fuck buddy. Like, just do what you feel like doing. Like, if you want to try it out with him, try it out with him. As, Does he even like you like that? Yeah, and you won't know unless you, like, test the waters. Now, um, I'll say this. As somebody, I feel you on being, a, not wanting today because you don't want to get hurt and all of that. I really do understand. However, you want to date. That's what I'm hearing in your thing. So you if you don't try, you're still going to be hurt. It's not going to be a man that's hurting you. It's going to be you that's hurting you, which I think is even worse because you play a part in that. You can't help it if somebody else hurts you, but you're hurting yourself. So you have to try to give yourself a chance. And again, as a person who understands truly how you feel, um, Getting hurt, it sucks. It really does. There's no way to sugarcoat that. Oh, but I'm tell still me about here. It. And y'all don't even know half the shit that I've been through with these men. Like, there's things that I don't tell a soul. And it has hurt to the core very bad. And sometimes you take time away from dating to like work on you and so that you don't keep making the same mistakes. But It doesn't mean that I feel like I'll never date again or anything like that. You've got to give yourself a chance and just try. I know it's hard. My Virgo sister, don't be so cynical. Just And if it doesn't work with him, if he's not feeling you, that's okay. Is somebody else out there that might? But And the only way to figure it out is if you try. So just try You've got to try or you're going to find yourself super lonely and you don't want to be. And it's going to be all your fault. Imagine. Look at the other side of it. Like it can be hard, but it can be a beautiful thing. Imagine that like you were, um, you're fucking this man and you have a crush on him or you're really feeling him and you're battling in your mind about whether to say something, but he's thinking all along, you don't even want to date anybody. You're so anti-relationship and he's like feeling you too, but he doesn't want to get turned down because you've probably said things in conversation like, I don't want to date anybody. Don't go. like me. Blah, 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 blah. So Choose your words wisely. So then he's like, okay, well, she's not interested and I'm going to keep fucking her because it's cool, but I'm going to look for a woman who's interested in me. And then he finds her and then you stuck without your fuck buddy and without a boo. Damn. That's going to be shitty. So, I mean, just food for that. So we hope you make the right decision Mm -hmm. and try it out. um, Sprinkle a little Libra in that Virgo. (laughs) Okay. Here's the next one. The subject line says, Lil ass dick, but magical fingers. Hey ladies, I hope you all are doing well and living good. I know Kiki is with all these bomb ass... I know Kiki is with all these bomb ass selfies she's been slaying on my news feed mm-hmm. on IG. And Medina has been coming through with the bomb ass pics and videos looking like you living your best life, girl. Get it. And the steaks looked like they came out good. Sorry for this long ass letter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's get into it. So 
Recently, I met this guy off a dating app. Everything is going good. We vibe over music, wine, fashion, etc. However, for some reason, it seems like the heifer, the heifer guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if that's a word that I just don't, it doesn't seem like it was placed correctly. It seems like the heifer guys I attract have the smallest penises I have ever seen. He's only about six and a half inches and I just don't know if I can work with that again. Girl, I thought she was gonna is say like small? two inches. Six and a half yeah, is I'm not like, that Yeah, I'm like six and a half inches is not small. Okay, and I just don't know if I can work with that. I say again because my horny ass didn't even care that his penis was small the first time. The first go round, he came in five to seven minutes. Then in the second round, he came roughly around 15 minutes. However, I'm like, Kiki, I'm sucking dick, but I want to use both hands at the same time. And I don't want his dick to disappear with only one hand on the dick. Plus, he claims he's Jamaican and he has the <laughs> massive energy to go rounds. But of course, he does not because he ain't. But of course he does because he ain't walking around with a monster. <gasps> I'm just so confused on what to do about this little ass dick. I'm used to at least seven inches. And he's only a half away from it. Because like <laughs> right. Kiki said, she, she really fucks with you. Because like Kiki said, she don't uh, want no big ass dick fucking up, and fucking up her insides. And I agree, but I don't want no little ass dick. I can't feel on the inside of me. Uh, <laughs> I really like him as a person. We vibe extra well, but I will not marry or date anybody that cannot please me. I did fake the fuck out of my cums with him and told him I came six times when I really <laughs> came only once. What? That was with his fingers. <laughs> LOL, please help me. Well, first of all, stop girl. Stop lying. Stop lying. Actually, you just, now I am going to share my cocktail because you can't lie. Like, you can't lie. In your grown age, even in your young age, Y'all got to stop lying to people. If you're really not pleased, you have to let it be known. And it doesn't have to be in a rude way. We're grown. You telling him you came six times and you only came once and it was from him fingering you? My nigga, he thinks he's doing a good job and that's not fair and it's your fault. How you might be able know? to teach him something. Yeah. Girl. Tell him what you want. And if you're nervous about it, what are you nervous about? Tell him what you want and what you need. Please, are you man. not gonna get it exactly i don't understand this six and a half inch seven inch dick issue <laughs> for this half an inch of space if the if whatever positions you're doing all jokes aside whatever positions you're doing if it's not hitting that spot that you're looking for him to hit switch positions you need to try something else where he can get in deeper coming at a different angle y'all are gonna have to try mm -hmm. different things also i think it helps the more aroused you are the wetter you are i know everybody wants to feel like they got a wet ass pussy all the time but let's not kid ourselves you know when somebody does extra work to turn you on that it's just a lot different Dripping. than just your normal normal lubrication Flow. you know yeah so take more time on the foreplay and sometimes that combination of him penetrating you and maybe kissing your neck and massaging you really good because he knows how to give massages i mean i'm not speaking from personal experience i'm just saying sometimes that makes a difference so mm -hmm. let him try some new things or stop wasting this man's time because ain't nothing wrong with a yeah. six and a half inch dick i'm sorry it's not huge but that's not i wouldn't think that's small I don't think that's small. And another thing I want to say, me and one of my friends were talking about this other day, and he's a, he's a man. Good sex takes two people. I repeat that. Good sex, great sex, life-changing sex, it takes two people. So you could be a part of the problem too. Well, you are a part of the problem because you're not telling the nigga what he's doing wrong. But if a man is great at what he does and then you're great at what you do, how you fuck him, y'all are going to have phenomenal sex. If you have phenomenal sex on your own, you can teach him. You can teach these niggas. It's not hard unless he just doesn't listen and he's selfish. Mm -hmm. Or unless y'all just don't like the same things and then you don't yeah. need to be fucking each other no way. Just move on. Yeah. Go your separate ways. But good luck. I hope that you start having better sex. Um, yeah. I do too, girl. I hope it works out. I hope we weren't too mean.
But tell that nigga. Okay. You got to tell him because you the one not getting your nut. And he thinking you had six of them. So he like, right. oh, yeah, I can give the bare minimum. I ain't even about to put in no work. She coming all these times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that again. All right. Now, I guess we can go ahead and move on to our cocktails. Remember? Uh-huh. 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 Remember, if you would like to share a cocktail on the show, you can email it to us, cocktails.atl at gmail.com, and maybe we will read it on the show. Okay. So I heard you say you had a cocktail. I have a cocktail I'm going to uh, share. (laughs) Oh. So, (laughs) and it is about telling people about what you need for sex. Okay. And I can honestly say, I've never, I like degrading sex. I say that all the time. I like feeling like a whore, but I don't like genuinely feeling like a whore. Does that make sense? Like, if that's like what we're, the role that we're playing, but I don't, I've, I'm not the type of girl that has had sex with people or had sexual experiences and I walk away feeling like a hoe, mm-hmm. like you just wanted to fuck. So there's a dude um, that, you know, we were having a good time together mm-hmm. and we were hanging out for a minute and hadn't had sex, which I was fine with. His, his time alone, which is fine. I like spent the night at his house and no sex happened. Well, the night that I, one night I go over to his house and I was like, I feel like tonight's going to be the night. And I was kind of nervous because, you know, I like him Mm -hmm. and I couldn't get a vibe of what his sexual experience might be like, because I don't know. He kissed very well, but I just couldn't get a vibe of like what his sex might be like. You know, sometimes you can get a vibe like, oh, this nigga nasty. Mm -hmm. So go to his house, go to his place. We're watching a movie. And um, he kind of has like a like a little bit of OCD, so he was like cleaning up and like making uh, it was weird. So we're kissing, we're on the bed, and he's like, we're kissing on the bed. I like bed. I like being in the bed, I like rolling in sheets. I like being passionate. Mm-hmm. Whether we have like been together movie. for a while, yeah, like a movie. And it, to me, you don't. It, there's no time frame on passion. Like even if we just are having a one night stand, my one night stands be passionate as fuck. Um, make it an experience. And so we're kissing and the kiss, the kisses were great. And he's like, stand up. And I was like, for okay. what? And in my mind, I was up? like, what? Yeah. Like he didn't pick me up. He was just like, stand up. He goes in the closet, grabs a condom, puts condom on. And he turns me around and like bends me over the side of the bed. And it was already weird because I was like, I don't want, this wasn't how I wanted to be how fucking, but I didn't say that out loud. To- I was just, this okay okay yeah it was it was like it was weird the transition was weird and so he like <laughs> no 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 no. i'm lying he lays me on the bed he eats my pussy then he goes in the condom i mean goes in the closet grabs the condom mm-hmm. puts it on i'm still laying on the bed he's like turn over i turn over and i'm fine with starting with hitting it from the back but like i said i like passion i want to roll in the sheets i want to kiss i want to look at you I'm not the type of bitch you're just going to be fucking and not looking at. And <laughs> that's what he did to me. And he was like, just fucking me. Like he was like, I was, and I was just laying there look, like looking at the, I could see the inside of the bathroom. And I was like, what are we, do- why are we doing it like this? Like mm-hmm. I, this was like high school sex. So then like I put my leg up to like kind of at least toss it back and like bounce on it. You know how you can like bounce on the dick when it's in it from the back. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, no, no. And I was like, what do you mean? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I was so confused. And then it was just done. I didn't even take my dress off. Like when he ate my pussy, he lifted it up. When he fucked me, he lifted my dress up. So we get in the bed, to we get in the shower. We take a shower together and we're like kissing in the shower. So I can't get it out of my mind though. So then we get in the bed, we go to sleep. I'm still just laying there looking at the ceiling like what the fuck just happened? Right. So we have a phone call. We were talking on the phone. He brings up the sex as if it was bomb. And I said, can I tell you something? And he was like, what's up? And I was like, I didn't that wasn't great and he was like what you mean i was like me you yeah i said there was no passion involved in that and i like passionate moments i like passionate sex Mm -hmm. and you didn't we didn't do that you didn't even give me the opportunity to like do what i want to do you literally he's like what you mean i was like you bent me over the bed my nigga and fucked me and like that's not really i felt like a hoe i literally felt like a hoe not in a funny way i felt like 
like you paid for some pussy and you just like got what you paid for and you were like, all right, I'm going to sleep. Mm -hmm. And it was weird. I was like, I didn't enjoy that. I didn't like it. And I just quite frankly don't appreciate it. And he was really like, we were on FaceTime. He was like, he was shocked that you actually okay. told him. He was shocked. And he was like, well, I don't want you to think that, like, I just don't know what I'm doing. Well, I do think that. And he was That's like, well, you showed I like to, you know, it's there. you got to, he was like, it's like building a house. He was like, each time you have sex with me, it's going to be a different, you know, part of building the house. Well, what part was that? <laughs> And that's my cocktail. My, I say all that to say, like, I'm not going to have another sexual experience with him, but I felt better telling him that he was not good at what he did. Like, that was not good. That wasn't good. So, and I hope he hears this. I hope he does, too. Because, sir, you were wrong for that. You were wrong for that. I was like, like talking about it like you really did some shit and you didn't. Like you really did. I need you to know you didn't. You really didn't put it down. And he really, he had a nice sized dick. He kissed well. He ate my pussy. Okay. But like you didn't, <laughs> you didn't, it wasn't an experience. Oh, each time is an experience to me. This wasn't. And maybe you just don't like me like that. Tell me that then. Don't waste my juices. I feel you. So, okay, here's my cocktail. So um, this happened to me many moons ago. But, <laughs> but anyway, so one time I was fucking this guy who y'all know how I feel about period sex. I'm horny every day, all day, every day, right? So this particular day I was on my period, but I was fucking a nigga who's not into that. So depending on my mood, sometimes I can be like a little pushy about it. And other times it's like, okay, I get it. You don't want it to smell like pennies in here. Anyway. <laughs> So, because I was so horny, I was in a dick sucking mood. So I'm like sucking his dick, right? And I'm really sucking it really good. And so then he he already knows that I'm on my period. So he asked me like, "Well, how bad is it?" And I don't understand why niggas who are not about to dive in would ask that question. Most of the time, when niggas ask that, they're they're talk. I don't know what they're doing, but it doesn't matter because in the end, they're gonna put it in. Okay. Well, he did not. <laughs> So I'm just sucking his dick for like a really long time. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, you know what? What am I doing? I'm going to sleep. Like I'm tired. You don't want to fuck because I'm on my period. Cool. But I really feel like you should do it anyway. I should have just lied to your ass, but I'm not going to do that. Your sheets are white. That would be fucked up. So we, oh. um, we went to sleep and still i'm like i kind of had an attitude because i'm like we've done it before like what's the problem mm -hmm. um so it just really sucked well i was thinking about it like my whole way home and i was thinking about it for like a few hours and then this other man hit me up the other man is a much nastier man very attractive man um who's you got closer to the mic <laughs> Who's really, really good at sex. Now, I hadn't had sex with him in quite some time. Um, and I was really considering it. But remember, I just left this man's house. So I just fucked, well, I didn't fuck the other man. And that was that was my reasoning behind it. But um, I had a talk with the first guy. And this is a two-part story. So I'll tell you all the second part next time. But um, I had a talk with him about like, okay, look. I don't understand what is grossing you out so much about a little bit of blood and you're going to have to get over it or this is going to end. And I ain't had sex with him again, but I had sex with the other guy. So I'll tell you all that story next week. I just wanted to let y'all know about a transition going on in my life right now. I mean, I'm sorry. This happened a long time ago. Never mind. <laughs> I'm getting my stories mixed up. Don't mind me. This happened many moons ago. Yeah. And that's it. Not a very great cocktail, but just I thought I'd give y'all a life update. I can't Look, believe some of the cocktails aren't going to be great. Some of them is just meant for y'all to learn from. Them. Yeah. Like I learned um, I shouldn't be having conversations with niggas about shit like this because what one man won't do, another man is going to be eager to do. OK. And let that be a lesson to us all. Mm -hmm. It's a word. It is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you guys, um, I hope you enjoyed us this week. Um. um I don't know what else. Uh, buy them damn taste pills. Um, it's time to yes. get tasty. And you're going to want to have fun after um, 
you know, after Thanksgiving. They make great stocking stuffers. Remember, they're not just for the women. They are for men and women. We have some other mm-hmm. great companies that are um, – that we'll be promoting and this you need to pay attention get it while the promo codes work because these are going to be great gifts for christmas if you're dating somebody and it's fresh or you got a fuck buddy and you want to get your fuck buddy something these are perfectly appropriate gifts for fuck buddies it's not too much not like too little something that you can actually use which i think is important with the gift um Mm -hmm. yeah and uh, make sure you sign up for patreon Excellent bonus content on there. Every week there's something new and we're going to start doing more live things that are exclusive to our patrons. So sign up at patreon.com slash cocktails. Um, and I guess for now, that's it. Yeah, that's it, guys. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.